In this video, we're going to talk about how to change the duration or the length of time that you want your tracks to actually take place in. To do this, there are a total of three different methods. The first method is probably the most direct method, and it's to physically go into the track that you have created, double click on the track, and to directly change it from the dialog box. It clearly is labeled where you can adjust the time, so just go into there and make any changes. Here, I'm going to half the total time that it takes for this part to follow along that linear track from 10 to 5 seconds. The second method is to adjust it within the sequence dialog box. So a sequence is when you um, arrange all of the different tracks to happen and within a certain order. If you double click on that sequence within the dialog box, for each one of those action shots or steps within the sequence, there is a duration column and that information is just pulled directly from the track. But there's also a delay column. So if for each one you can highlight it and then you can manually adjust the duration. And if you want it to perhaps wait a couple seconds before it begins, you can add a delay. So here I'm going to adjust the duration of something to make it longer. And then for the second step in the sequence, I'm going to have there to be a five second delay before it begins. So again, all this is done within the sequence dialog box. And finally, method number three is going to be using something called a new Gantt chart window. To get to there, you're going to go up to the window tab and then it's the second option from the top, new Gantt chart window. This pulls the information directly from the sequence, so it won't pop up with anything until you click on the sequence one time. After you've clicked on the sequence, it's a essentially just a visual representation of what you've already set up in your sequence dialog box. So you can see how all of the action items display as like a gray bar or a gray dot. So you can kind of read this across and see which things are taking place when. If you also notice on the left hand side there is a duration column and then there's also like some timestamp columns where it's showing you like when that particular action is going to start and stop. So you can double click on the duration box, click on it, adjust the number manually. You can see how it updates the little box to the side. Um, and the second method is just to kind of do like a free handed approach. If you hover over the end of the box, you can click and drag on the right end of the box to make that length longer or shorter. And if you click in the middle portion of the box, that's actually going to slide the box as a whole kind of left or right. So in that, it's kind of adjusting both the delay and then if you again click and drag on the end, you can adjust the duration. Close the window and then any adjustments that you've made in that new Gantt chart window will be reflected in the sequencing information as well. So again, those are your three different methods directly inside of the track, inside of the sequence, or with the sequence's new Gantt chart window.